right let's wait for a few seconds before it goes live everywhere All right, so I think we are live everywhere and ready to go. Um, I am going to get the comments in here. This is all good. All right, folks. So it's been a couple of days since we did this. I think we last streamed on Friday, trying to get the, um, um, you know, trying to get basically function calling to work uh, for my app. Uh, but today I'm going to do something a little different. What I'm trying to do is, um, I'm trying to fine tune the Llama model. So uh, some of you may know I'm pretty uh, enthusiastic about in-context learning. Uh, I still feel in-context in learning is actually the way that most organizations would be using uh, AI, LLMs, generative AI, and so on and so forth. But um, it is important to kind of know when you should be using uh, fine tuning and what it is about and so on and so forth. So today we are going to look at how we are going to fine tune a Llama 2 model. Um, and the example I've chosen is basically to have uh, a Llama 2 7B, uh, in particularly Guanaco kind of a model, to actually speak SQL. So I'm going to use this data set. Um, it's called the BMC2 SQL Create Context, uh, where if you give uh, a context in terms of a, a, a table structure and then ask it a question in English, it's going to give you back a SQL query response. So we're going to see uh, how that's going to work uh, uh, because I think the plain Guanaco model has seen SQL, um, uh, but probably isn't that good. So we'll we'll test it out. Uh, I have trained models before, uh, but I've used like BERT kind of like models for training. Uh, this is the first time I'm going to be uh, exploring uh, Llama 2's parameter efficient fine tuning. Uh, this is by Hugging Face. Uh, we are also going to use the um, TRL library, which will have the SFT trainer. So because this it's just so much work doing this on your own. It's even much easier just getting these libraries, uh, especially now they are they are awesome. Um, uh, and this is a whole bunch of concepts that we need to understand along the way as we build this. So uh, like I said, I have some knowledge, but I'm sure I have gaps as well. Uh, and we'll try to fit this all in. Now, the important thing about um, these large language models is they're large, right? So uh, even the smallest model of Llama 2 that we are trying to uh, train, it's a 7 billion parameters model. Now, uh, let's do a quick math. Uh, so if I have to get 7 billion so i need to get 7 into uh, 32 that's 32 bits uh divided by 8 uh that's 28 billion bytes uh that's literally 280 gigabytes is it supposed yeah right so let's say 28 billion yeah 2.8 gigabyte no it, it's wrong let me let me do the math here i'm pretty sure i'm i'm wrong on this let's see so 7 billion is basically uh 7000 that's a million that's a billion uh into um 32 bits uh that's for full floated to divided by eight uh that's that and if you want to basically do how many megabytes this is or gigabytes this is it's basically um 1000 star 1000 oh i have to do another divide by 1000 i definitely messed it up so this is why i need my terminal uh um this is so <laughs> weird seven uh billion into um uh, 32 divided by eight that's 280 um and the whole thing basically uh, is divided by 2024 into 2024 yeah so you need like 200 uh, uh, yeah, uh, you need uh, 
26 gigabytes uh, uh, kilobytes megabytes yeah so you need approximately 26 gigabytes of space so even if you have like a commercial gpu that's not going to work this is just to run the model so and if you have to train it then it's roughly three times the size so it's going to you're going to be using something like you know a, a 100 gpu which has like uh you know 80 gigs of ram to be able to train a 7 billion parameter model uh, which is clearly not know practical like for doing this uh, and as you go bigger like if you go to the 13 billion or the 70 billion model uh, then even inference on a single gpu is not going to be possible you need multiple gpus to do the inference so so how are we going to train this on a collab notebook right uh, uh, to do this so th that is where uh, parameter efficient fine tuning comes in now parameter efficient fine tuning uses uh, this idea called the low rank adapter uh, i pulled up an article on this uh, this is a pretty cool illustration of what it is uh, so suppose you have a weight matrix uh, which has a, a thousand by thousand sort of like a vector so if you have to train all those matrices you essentially need uh, like a megabyte just to train this one one you know uh, tensor now the idea here is that if you actually then we have to just calculate the difference of the weights uh, between what is trained versus what is not trained that's basically the delta w uh, what we can do is we can make that a smaller uh, rank adaptation so you basically convert it into a thousand by eight and then into an eight by eight into an and then eight by thousand sort of like a thing and so you essentially if you train these two matrices thousand by eight and this thousand by eight and then this would give you the thousand by thousand uh, matrix and you can basically add to that to get the new layer so uh, the idea is that now from uh, uh, a million parameters to train you only have to train like sixteen thousand parameters now does it work yes does it work well that's a that's a different story uh, so th the reason why this works is that um, you are only nudging the model towards a certain output and not training it on completely fresh data so if you if you say the llama model never has never seen sql or never seen these kind of like question and answer pairs then it's obviously not going to work right so it's not so it 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 has gone through some data in pre-training which looks similar but it's probably not gotten as much data as this so what we're going to do is we're going to train a specialized model which can understand sql and uh, we try to do this oh that's the hope at least so we'll see if we get on the other side of this now that said uh, there is also another trick that we're going to use we're going to use uh, a trick called quantization now uh, i told that you have to use uh, a a 32 bits for representing a single number uh, but then um, what if we reduce the granularity of it right i mean so i think uh, uh, Vance had a, a let's see so this is how floats are stored yeah how integers and stored floats work uh, so this is like a really cool uh design that came out quite a bit back i suppose i'm not sure when this was released but i remember seeing this a while back uh so this is essentially what the uh number line really looks like for a, a float uh 64 bit uh you know which is essentially a double uh so you have uh in each one of these buckets you have uh, 2 power 52 numbers in each one of them and then you have uh, you know more numbers here right i mean in these as, as you grow uh, uh, as you go away and away from zero and uh, the numbers get larger uh, then uh, the precision on this basically reduce right so that, that's there now uh the the closest numbers are essentially between minus one to plus one that's where a lot of these individual variants are there now if this works the same way for 64 bit we can see how that would work for 32 bit um and then getting it further down to 16 bit and then to 8 bit and the new category that's like 4 bit so if you think about 4 bit values then you can only store like two power four sort of like discrete values in in that so essentially you're going to store uh, you know 32 different values 32 unique values now four bit is is 
painful uh i mean like it's i mean i i never thought four bit or eight even i i even didn't think eight bit would work uh but clearly a lot of people have made int eight uh work well uh and uh, with bits and bytes um so they also have this nf4 format which is the uh four bit uh, uh format actually so let's see um so this is 8-bit quantization and then there's this and a 4 4-bit quantization that you can do uh, with this and this is what we're going to use so there's this 4-bit quantization in LoRa um, so these 4-bit models uh, they've already trained like adapters uh, and they have already published some of these models in 4-bit uh, so we're going to use that 4-bit adapter here and see how that works Right, so this is like the FP8. Um, so this is FP8 format, but then you have the four-bit format. So essentially, this is this is it. So, uh, so it, it basically tries to uh, you know represent the sign, maybe maybe not, uh, and then they have uh, a bunch of these uh, frank that are there. Um, so that's essentially what we are trying to do so i'm going to mute for a sec here Okay. so we are back sorry about that um all right so now okay how, how does uh this whole thing work so since you have only so many discrete values um there's no fixed format as one can do uh and uh, sometimes you basically use uh, you know one bit for the mantis the two bits for the mantis and so on and so forth now so this is what we are trying to do so we are trying to use the uh, four bit uh, configuration which is the nf4 uh, quantization type and then we are going to also use uh, llama 7b and see how this is going to work so i think this is going to crash and burn horribly but let's see how far we get ahead with this and this is a learning exercise so, so I set up a, a small uh, hugging face notebook. I got some, um, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, some of these libraries set up. And I also have, um, you know, I set up like weights and biases and notebook login. And most probably I'll have to do this again because I'll have to switch the uh, uh, type of runtime to a GPU runtime. So we'll see how that goes. So now let's start getting some of this. So this is using the um, uh, four bit QLR of like Llama 2 v Guanaco. Um, and, and this is already four bit format. So uh, all we're going, this, um, uh, this uh, collab notebook that I have uh, is from guardrail ML. Uh, so I'll be using this as a reference. I'll be copy pasting a lot of the code from here into onto our notebook. Uh, I'll use weights and biases instead of tensor board. I like weights and biases better. Just a p personal preference. And then we'll do all these kind of things. So. Um, we'll we'll try to do this and uh, let me also see uh, if i can get an uh, i mean maybe not on the stream but later if i can get to an a100 uh, i'll also uh, do a, a b float 16 training and then we'll try to compare uh, what the quantized value in like 4 bit training versus b float 16 kind of makes if it, if it makes a difference so let us see um but uh, yeah your credits kind of like run out the moment you switch on like a100 it's like pfft, right all i have a cola pro subscription but even then i try to get as much work done on uh, uh, on a t4 uh, before going to an a100 all right so let's let's try getting some of this done so 
this is uh, basically bringing in uh, the dependencies i'm going to copy paste as much as i can because i'm pretty sure we're going to spend a lot of time training but we'll also go through uh, line by line on each one of them so i'm going to add another code cell um, and basically this is getting torch this is getting data sets uh, this is getting um, you know the auto model ca casual ml auto tokenizer bits and byte config and all that from transformers uh, it also gets pipeline so we can basically use like text generation pipeline to you know kind of get the output uh, we also get peft lora config peft model blah 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 uh, and then we also have trl this is library is awesome this is it gives us like the supervised fine tuner trainer so all you have to do is like send in a few um, uh, parameters the training config and it will take care of this i'm going to remove guardrail client i'm sorry guardrail um, i don't need it just yet i think for this training uh, but thanks for the notebook i mean it's really helpful all right so i have this uh just to make sure everything's like okay uh i'll run this so i am running on a cpu type here um uh, it, it is running the compute engine backend i'm not running a gpu backend just want to make sure that everything like is like syntactically correct and so on and so forth i will also maybe switch it over to a t4 backend once we have some uh, meat of code in there so let me also write um a text uh cell and say hey, this import generic imports right so we got this now um we'll also get uh the hyperparameters for tests um so we're going to use all this config value so let's see that's let's get everything so we'll try to understand uh, as much as possible uh, on this i'm pretty sure there'll still be some more gaps uh, we'll go uh, and then do this as well so let's let's add another code cell and we'll import these and yeah so let's look at it so this is uh basically for each gpu uh, it basically says what's the batch size what's the eval batch size uh they have the number of accumulation steps they have the learning rate um I mean, we can also do adaptive learning rate but yeah learning rate it's the standard learning rate and then we have like the uh, norm for the max grad uh we have the weight dk uh lora alpha lora dropout lora r i think 64 is a dimension that we have so this is these are some things that i need to understand um on the max sequence like this not set so this is the model that we'll be using i think it's fine um so we're going to get guardrails uh, llama 2 7b guanaco instruct sharded um and this is a new model name so this i'm going to change i'm going to call it squeal right and this is the data set name that we want to use so like i said this is the data set name so let me copy this data set name here and we're going to use four bit precision for model loading um we don't want uh, nested quantization yet uh we want to do the uh type is for uh, float 16 uh the um the quantization type that we want to use is nf4 that means that float 16 gets converted down to nf4 um and then uh, we're going to basically try to train it for two epochs um we don't want this to be on fp16 just yet um uh, and we don't want B bf16 training yet as well um we uh don't want to use packing um uh, i don't know what this is let me try to understand maybe i'll look at the training config to find out what it is uh, we want gradient checkpointing for sure we want the we want the page adam w optimizer um uh, and then this is the oh they do use the learning rate schedule so uh constant is a bit better than cosine it has advantage for analysis um but yeah it's um, we are using like the scheduler type is a cosine that means that uh, you're going to have a, a higher learning rate initially and then it kind of like drops down as you uh, as the training progresses because i mean you're training the weights and all that and uh, i think this makes sense um we don't want the number of steps um 
uh, we can probably set this max steps as well on this uh, warm-up ratio uh, I don't know what that is um, we have group by length and we do want um, to save every 10 steps which makes sense um, and then we have uh, we want to also log uh, the data every step uh, okay and the outputs are going to go to a result uh, we're going to use the gpu so it's going to load the whole thing uh, here we're going to say van b and i also want uh, uh, let's see uh, i want to get the uh, i want to get to docs basically i i think you um so so for the transformer we just set the name here um yeah so i i have set the project name i have set the uh um i'm just looking for um uh, where does that go uh, there's a way to oh yeah here you can set the run name uh, to do this so I'm just going to set the run name here on this so run name is actually going to be uh, squeal and be run we'll probably change this later once we get the type maybe we'll get the GPU type as well maybe we'll we'll, we'll see so that's pretty much all there is so I think this is good you got this and then uh so they have a helper method to load the model uh, so let me copy this first and then we'll try to understand this all right, so all right so let's understand this so they do a load model what does it return it gets a model tokenizer and theft config okay so um i like so like I said, my brain is on trust. Sometimes I'm like, oh, it takes in a string and it returns these three, right? Types are nice. Uh, but anyway, so so they have um, the compute D type for the BNB 4-bit compute D type. So we set up the BNB 4-bit compute D type to NF4 uh, here. Where did that go? Oh, uh, yeah. BNB 4-bit. Uh, this is the compute D type. So compute D type is float 16. Um, uh, so it's basically going to get the um, the torch 416, float 16, and it's going to set up this thing. Uh, this is the bits and bytes config that's used for quantization. So it basically says, okay, load in 4-bit. Uh, this is the quantization type, which is NF4. Uh, this is like float 16. And uh, it says, should I use nested quantization? Yes or no? I think we said false here. Uh, and if it is float 16 and if it uses 4-bit then it tries to get the device capability and if the device supports um, uh, B float 16 uh, then it says that you can accelerate your training argument with BF 16 uh, so let's see uh, that's okay uh, then uh, we try to get the auto model for causal LM from tree taint and we get the model name which is actually uh, what we set up here which is the guanaco guardrail llama 27b guanaco instruct sharded um, and then we set the device map which I think everything is going to load on this and then we have the quantization config okay uh, which is basically what we set up here and then we do a, a use cache to false um, we set the pre-training training parameters to one uh, and then we have the peft config this is the lora config where he has the alpha the dropout the lora r and the bias which is there and task type so let's look at this lora config and try to understand what that means um logging face um so let's look at LoRa config now. Uh, units for LoRa. Uh, it does the merge adapter and all this. So let's understand. So the LoRa config allows you to control how LoRa is applied to the base model with the following parameters. R is the rank of the update matrices. It's expressed in int. Lower rank means smaller update matrices and fewer trainable parameters. Uh, alpha is the LoRa scaling factor that we were looking at. Uh, 
the bias is specifies the bias parameters should be called it's either none or all or lora only as the bias uh, and that's about it so what other uh, pattern did we give here so i think these are the three parameters so this lora alpha lora dropout and r so we said bias to none uh, so let's understand what's lora dropout um lora dropout doesn't document that out yeah, it doesn't say maybe if I use the um, if I use the uh, uh, let's do these are conceptual guides. So let's look at let's configuration um, and then maybe Lora config is here. Um, let's search for Lora config directly here. Lora config. Uh, pef.lora config um, and lora dropout lora dropout basically is the probability dropout probability for lora layers okay that's fine so now let's now that we understand some of these parameters let's go back uh, and see what these are so we have um, where does that go we have oh yeah yeah so lora alpha is 16 and lora r is 64 so this is the scaling that we are going to do and this is basically the rank right so so from thousands of probably thousand five thirty six or whatever that that size is um uh, or i don't know what lambda size is maybe we'll, we'll try also try to figure out if we can get the number of trainable parameters once we have loaded this and see you know how many parameters are we training versus how many parameters are there in the model um, like we know it's 7 billion parameters so if you can basically just get the uh, number of trainable parameters that we are doing then we can find out okay what's the what's the size in which we are looking at right so so that's for lora and then uh, this is pretty straightforward we basically get it get the auto tokenizer for the model uh, so every model in hugging face actually has a card along with that and that card basically says hey this is the tokenizer that i used for this model that way hugging face can basically uh, download the tokenizer get the tokenizer as well um, and do that so and and since it's just a llama 2 model i think it'll be the standard llama 2 tokenizer uh, that'll be along with that so this is this is good uh, so this is load model. Um, let's just make sure this runs. Um, okay, so the method is that. So we haven't actually run the method, but we're just doing this. Maybe I should change the runtime type to a T4. Let's see. Um, change the runtime type. Uh, so I can get a T. I'll get a T4, and then uh, let's see if we run out of T4. Maybe we we'll, can get to a V100. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it should be doable with a T4. Um, so it is connecting so I have t4 now um, so let's try to find out what it is so I'll have to run all this again it's fine um, so I I was actually initially thinking of getting like a lambda labs uh, instance uh, for training this I just couldn't find one. I mean, getting your hands on a GPU is like, like really hard these days. All right, so at least A100. So I, I looked at Lambda Labs. So let's let's find out if there's something there actually. Um, close sign in. Uh, launch instance oh, they have one uh, i only get an 810 that's about it so i yeah uh, i i'll stick with a uh, i'll stick with the notebook for now all right so we have this so we have something we have the tesla t4 uh we have 15 gigs of ram uh so let's see if it works with this so i'm i want to basically set this up as well uh, usually the root folder should still be there no it's not okay i want to switch over to the secrets view for a sec um and let me um, get to hugging face
All right, so I think we're good. All right, we're back. So uh, I logged this in. So let me do the imports. And uh, let's set up the hyperparams and then we'll do the load model. And let's actually try to load the load the model here. So uh, I think that should be the next step. Yeah, so we get the model tokenizer and peft config from here. So let's do that. Right, so we have this. And this is good. So it's downloading the model. It's, uh, I think this is a tokenizer, it must be. No, it can't be there. It's just the first part of that model. It's like 1.96 gigs. Two, two, two. So this while this loads, let's uh, let's look at what else you have to do. So uh, they have a format dolly function. Uh, what it does is that it writes it in this format so which is like uh, s instruction sample of an instruction and it says oh here's some context um and if the sample has a context and then it it tries to finish the instructions and then there is a sample response so and then uh, basically they combine all these uh, if it's not none and that's the prompt uh, and in that so and then they have this template data set um, which basically given a row in a in in the data set it tries to do this so uh, we'll have to adapt this whole thing for um for our uh, sql uh, uh configuration so let's try doing that so i'm going to copy this um i'm going to create another code window while it is there and try to run this um oops i did it run okay uh, I don't know why this game. Uh, I don't want this output. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, I only wanted to copy this stuff. Anyway, so now what I want is actually uh, this is the data set that I want. And I think we already declared the data set that we wanted. Uh, and that is actually the data set underscore name. I'm not sure why that's this is not using that. So let's do this. So let's say data set underscore name and let's explore the data set a bit um so i'm gonna say format um what's that called again uh, bmc2 sql context sql creator so I i'm just going to say format uh, i'm just going to call it format sample that's good so so each one of these samples basically is going to get the uh, the this answer question and string so these are uh, basically json l uh, documents so basically each one will get get like a json i mean each line essentially is like a json uh, sort of thing so i think that's what we'll get so we'll try to do that so um so we have so the instruction we want is actually a sample of uh, 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 sample of uh, 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 question uh, no we'll, we'll do context and question actually so we'll do that so we'll do a sample of context um, and we'll say we'll say given uh, the following table structure and we'll do a backslash n here even though it's another token, it's fine. Uh, it's just that since it's SQL, we don't want uh, this thing. Given a sample string here, here can, and then we'll just give the question here actually. So we'll do uh, uh, F uh, and we'll do a context. And uh, so this would essentially be, um, I think it's called question. Yeah, question. Um, and that's that's uh, rather well formed already so that's good question and um we'll do this so uh, pretty much i think all of them should have this but we'll verify this later and then uh we close the instruction um uh, with this and then uh, we get the samples uh query actually 
right? So what's it called? I think it's just a sample of uh, sample of answer. Okay, sample of answer. Right. So we have this template, this, and then we'll call this format sample. And then we can just do uh, something to join. We don't want to do if it won't be none. Um, in fact, we can keep it simpler. Actually, uh, we can do a. I think this should work. I always, I'm, I'm not that confident with Python, so I need to test it out a good day. If I dot join, yeah, it doesn't have join. Um, so that's why you have to do something dot join this. sorry all right so that's how you do it okay got it so that's why uh you have, i always get i'll put a space just in case join this okay uh so this should be good so we have the format sample um and then we have the end of string token this is the beginning uh this is also the us token i suppose for this thing i may be wrong but we'll look into it um so we have these and uh essentially we are going to load the data set and we're going to basically map uh this whole thing so so we are just getting the first 50 rows um and if you don't want everything just can get the whole thing uh which is i think 82000 rows but uh for now um i think 50 rows should be fine uh, no it's 78000 rows yeah I, I think it should be fine to get the first 50 rows uh and then see what that is and we can always comment this out and then we can we can load the whole thing so while our model is still getting loaded So, wow, this is quite a lot. So we are actually we are already using, I think I think it's just a tokenizer that is loaded, I, I, I suppose. I don't suppose it's the whole model yet. All right, so. So let's see. All right. So this is as this is loading. Um, yeah, let, maybe we'll read through uh, the rest of it to figure out. I think this is good. So this loads the data set and then we can like inspect what the data set is looking like. And then we can try to um, have a generator and then we can probably try to do this as one of the instructions maybe from the um, uh, from the format let's see how that goes and then once we have that um, they basically get okay they, he's doing this uh, and then he's doing more examples I suppose um, and okay, this is where the training argument training comes in. And um, so this is still now it's we just doing like testing against generation trying to do this. Um, and uh, I mean, here again, you have the weight of an unland swallow. This is the classic joke from Monty Python, Holy Grail, uh, right? Uh, it's like in everybody's favorite scene. Uh, yeah, this is, this is cool. So they have this, so it does generate to a certain extent uh what it knows and then 
uh, this is essentially where we are doing the training and i think this is done on the um, data set that we have um, so we have the train data set that's that's there uh, to do this so is there also an is that eva so with sft trainer don't you also have so i know it's it's like a auto regressive training and then you have the model but do you also do evaluation as a part of this does it do the train test split here okay what is it how does it do so let's look at the sft trainer and see how that how that works um oops good thing this is all hidden um, so let's look at the docs. Uh, two, 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 transformers. Is this, is this not with, okay, peft. Is tree RL a separate guide of its own? Yeah, TRL is here. Transform. All right. Okay, here you have the TRL SFT trainer. All right. So now, when you give a train data set, um, this is what you give. You have the training adapters, blah blah blah. Um, oh, that's that's cool. Okay. So you can also give the eval data set uh, to do this. Let's look at that. Eval data set. This is optional. The data set user, we recommend users to use a constant length data set to create the data set. Okay. Um, this is the data used for training. So the thing doesn't, I mean, they have, it, it's optional. I mean, I understand why it's optional, but um, all right, so let's do this because it's it is auto regressive. It is going to train uh, the loss. So I think this maps the lo training loss. Yes, it starts with one point three five. It goes up. It goes down. Goes up again. Um, and this is on steps, right? So it's not on the individual sample. So yeah, I think it's for limited run. So we see it, but we'll, we'll, we'll try to find this. Um, and then once the training is done, it's being visualized here. So let's, let's see, let's see, let's find out. So, uh, I think this is done. Yes. Our model is loaded. Uh, we have our formatter that's here and, uh, let's download the data files. So we have the data set already. So let's try to find out what the data set has. Um, so, so we'll do a data set of, uh, of zero. Um, we'll do a zero to 10. Let's find out what's there. So it says given the following table structure, create the table name, um, uh, blah, 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 for all this kind of things. Um, so can I, um, uh, Can I do a print of D or D of text maybe of text? Wait, what? Uh, it's a string indices must be integers. Is the whole thing a string? because it just had text in it. Yeah, it just says text. This is, uh, no, I think this is because, uh, I think I can do this. Yeah, so I'll say for text in, I just want to make sure it's formatted right. 
right so this is formatted right so this is good so we have uh so then the, the okay this is this is good this is good all this is good so this, this is nice so i i think we are in a we are in a good shape here uh so we have this so maybe we'll we'll do a range of um uh, so we have thousand uh, let's, let's just do a hundred right um and then uh what we'll do is we'll try to uh you know try to find out how it looks like at this point in time so so we'll have that we'll have to obviously change the prompt and we'll try to give one of these prompts in here uh given the following table structure have this um <laughs> so i mean we have a backslash n on that right um in the following table structure um and then after the inst it's basically we'll say uh So we'll say million US, right? And and so this actually uh, does US for US million nine point eight nine because it's a var car. Um, it's a dumb query, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, let's try to find out um, what this generates actually. All right, so we we do two hundred two hundred should be plenty for us. Uh, maybe. So let's let's see how that works. All right, so um, it just says "Walking Dead." This thing it doesn't give the uh, uh, it doesn't give this out. Um, so let's try another one. Um, So we'll say, um, we'll say this. I think the end of token should automatically come. So this, or the start of token should come. This is what we are interested in. Um, so clearly uh, the model doesn't know uh, about SQL. So, which has me worried. Let's save. What did the tournament the tournament that got an A in 19 forget in 1959? And uh, that's basically uh, select start select 1949 from table where where 1945 equals this, right? And so um this query is wrong we want to say select id from table um table name 22 where uh, id is uh, uh, this is uh, this example is just horrible i'm wondering if it's just a <laughs> I, I i think this is a better table Anyway, let, let, let's try. I mean, at least it should it should go with like select star from um, this thing, right? Maybe that remains. So maybe we should instruct the model to say, "Hey, generate uh, generate SQL. Uh, give me the SQL query for the following." So let's try. Um, let's try generate. given the following table structure right so uh, so let, let's say 
let's see if this works let's prompt engineer it a bit uh, to see if guanaco can generate uh, sql i mean if it doesn't generate sql it doesn't generate sql probably it hasn't come across the data let's find out Uh, we are still, I mean, it's still not a lot of RAM. Uh, oh, it, it actually does a pretty decent job. This is not, this is not too bad. Maybe let's, let's try doing this. Um, let's just make sure if this is fine. So, uh, given this is their opponent Varkar, weak Varkar, where week four so which who did the texans play on week four um so this is also not a very good query so this is uh, this is basically also we have to also say uh yeah this table is also dumb actually but yeah let's see so let's see if we can get this so let me for let's edit our format function um to make this a little easier um give me uh for the given table structure i think this is nice so we'll do this so it can generate sql sometimes i think the output that this has um is better but let's see we just want the sql output so it still gives us a little bit of it's still a little wordy um and i'm also going to uh, yeah i think this, this is good let's see and maybe i let me do a uh um so this is shuffled so yeah this this okay uh, let me shuffle this again get the data then let's see uh, points integers touchdown uh which points have touchdowns larger than this blah blah, blah. uh output the sequence of the table structure create a uh, a creative words uh blah, 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 creative contestants so this has a join so that's that's interesting uh so uh, this would be interesting to find out if uh you know this can get it if so let's see I think you don't need the start string token i think it should still work This should be fine let's see if this works and remember this is uh, uh this is in nf4 so we are only using 5.3 gigs of vram it's actually pretty cool All right, so this is this is good. So we have um, so we have the contestant and votes, um, but it just gets the contestant number. It doesn't do a join. 
yeah so uh, this is this is okay uh, so uh, we know that the guanaco model has seen the query but let's see after training what these uh, look like actually so that the, it, it, it's good for us to know all right so let's start uh, doing the training config so for training uh, we're going to do get this um, basically and we're going to put this in here and we're also going to yeah we, so we also change the report to report to is going to be weights and biases and i think we set the run name to uh, uh squeal run notebook so i also put t4 in here this is the t4 type um so this is essentially what we want um and our data set is set up we have uh two patches so we only have like 100 examples uh to train on um we can try increasing it later but I think it's fine we have text as a field that it needs to get this is all good we're not using packing um, so we say trainer or train and we say to output there okay uh, so and what is the output there i think we set it up here all the way on top so yeah results basically that's what we did all right so let's try running this let's see what happens and i am going to pull up the resources that are there okay uh so given these so given this peft config for the model okay can i get okay that that's a good question so i want to get the so i said we wanted to see the list of trainable parameters uh, so let's let's look at that. Um, so I have the pef config. I think this should be in that pef config. Can I get? Um, so we don't have a pef model yet. So we just have the pef config. My question really is: Can I get a list of trainable parameters from the pef config? Um, Mm -hmm. or would i only get it after i apply to it how do i know that so uh, let's let's try to understand this so we got the base model so this is the base model okay uh, so and then we have the lora config but it doesn't know anything about the model um, and then we simply have the peft config right so we'll have to apply the peft config on the model for it to know uh, what it is but then we are only getting the trainer here and we're setting the peft config so we don't have the model yet so only after we do a trainer.train we get the trainer.model that gets saved okay that is interesting so i mean possible to calculate it but this doesn't quite do this maybe we'll try to get this model and try to find out uh what the uh this thing is but it should be possible uh let's ask how do our left config trainable parameters so we we do the LoRa config. Uh, basically, you do a model dot parameters. Yeah, this thing. Um, so for the LoRa model, oh yeah, you have to do a LoRa model of this config to be able to get that. We'll we'll get to that. We'll we'll do this. I think this happens after the SFT trainer. Uh, this the trainer dot 
before calling trainer.train i think this should have this so let's let's not have these two i'm just going to comment these two out um and i can do a trainer dot model dot um so this will be the lora model right so um so let's see uh, i thought you could just query for this so let's see uh peft model uh, from tree train from okay. Uh, yeah get nb trainable this is the number of trainable parameters for all uh number of all all right let's look at this get nb uh trainable or okay let's look at this and see um Right. In both these cases, we're just setting up the training arguments in the SFT trainer. We should be able to safely rerun them again if need be. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, oh, I forgot to put a comma in here. So here, if you see, now that we are doing this, uh, it should increase the resource. So it should roughly go up to about like 10 gigs. All right, so this uh, is no attribute get nb trainable parameters. Okay, uh, that is interesting. Um, so let, what are the methods on this? So what 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 class is this? So this is oh yeah, it says what class this is. Uh, this is a uh, this is a left model for causal LM. Okay. Let's see, uh, left model causal LM, okay. Uh, so this, okay, this is there, okay. Let's put the source for this. So uh, it, it actually is left model, okay. Uh, so let's see uh, class pef model um, that has a push to hub mix in okay blah, blah, blah. so then it has a pef config so this should have um, this should have the number of parameters that it should train on It has get nb trainable parameters of self is there. Um, okay. So this is yeah trainer dot model dot get nb trainable is it because of the version of f that we're using? Or did I misspell it? Okay, which version of PEFT are we using and when did this get added? So we are using 0 0.4.0. I mean, at least as far as this notebook is concerned. Uh, which version is PEFT on now? 0 0.5. Maybe we switch to 0 0.5 and see if that works. I know I have to change everything, but I really want to see. Do want to run in everything? Um, so I'll, I'll probably say run all cells. Um, can I restart runtime? Uh, I can't restart runtime. Can I? Okay. Oh, it got disconnected. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. This is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. This is not author by Google. Uh, I want to disconnect this runtime. Disconnect and delete this runtime. I looked at the wrong one. Sorry. Okay. This is what I want. 
So can I can I restart runtime? Yes, I can restart runtime. And I want to change this to beft 0.5. Um, I also have Xformers. Okay, good. Uh, what version of Transformers am I running? Uh, I think let's let's find out. Let's find out soon. All right, so. Is happening okay let me run time restart run time yes and it's restarting it's a run all so it should have downloaded it's just restarting the runtime so i think you should just install the pef 0.5 alone and uh, these should be essentially written on to, I mean, it, it loads the credentials on the local prior since only the runtime is restarted, it should still be there. Let's find out. All right, so it still has that 15 gigs of RAM. All right, so it should be there. Ah, it still wants it. So, um, sorry guys, I'm just gonna, this Right, so right, let's see the notebook login is not working. Why? But yeah, let me not bother about notebook login at this point in time. So, um, yeah, as I said, this is actually loading the model. Uh, the model is being loaded. As you can see, GPU RAM is climbing. All this to figure out the number of trainable parameters. <laughs> I want to know how much because we are training a 7 billion parameter LoRa config model. So I just want to know what's the, uh, uh, what's the number of parameters we are actually training this model on. So. And we have shuffled the data set as well. So that will also be interesting to see what the output for um, uh, this is going to look like. Let us see. It's taking a while to load. Again, this is not downloading. It's just loading this to memory from like the saved safe tensor objects. Right, so this is loaded. Um, so it has these samples. So it's now trying to generate this text. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. I mean. So this uh, should generate the text based on this. This is really slow. All right, so it gets the contestant votes, group by count. It still doesn't do a join, which uh, because we do ask for the name. 
this is just uh, you know straight up uh, like this okay so now yeah so this is the number of parameters that we're training uh, so we are actually training of the 6.7 odd billion parameters. Uh, we are only training 33 million parameters, which is amazing. Which is this is really good, right? I mean, just um, that's quite a bit. So now, okay, let's let's go ahead and uh, actually run the training. Right, and this is basically where the run starts and we should see the training lungs seems to be increasing <laughs> right. let's see All right, we are we are getting better loss, and again, uh, the difference between uh, what this was, right? I mean, if you if you look at this um, loss that was here, uh, I mean, it started with one point three five because I feel uh, the Guanaco data set and the uh, Dolly data set uh, more or less were kind of similar, right? So it's just more data, uh, different kind of data, but more data. Uh, is just exposing it to more data and so uh the i don't expect the loss to have converged as much but in our case um i mean we we are starting off with a completely different sort of like an output uh for our model so uh i definitely expect the model's behavior to change and and that's the point of fine tuning uh, with fine tuning you really want to focus on the style of output um, rather than uh, focusing on the the knowledge right i mean a lot of people say hey i want to train my model uh, i want to uh, give it more um, knowledge i think that's that's not what fine tuning is ideal for i feel uh, for that you are better off uh, doing in context learning uh, and that's what you know wavery is focusing on it's focusing on um, you know giving the most efficient tools to do like in context learning but in this particular case uh, we really want to uh, you know change the style of the output right because guanaco is like a question answering data set and now we are essentially tr trying to turn it into a sql generation model Right, and we are seeing how that goes. So let's see, how many steps did we say? Did we say hundred steps? Oh yeah, the training is complete. Um, oh, 75 steps. Oh, we said seventy-five steps. All right, so this is done. So the training is complete now. Uh, let's try running something off the model. So we should have our weights and biases. Uh, this thing as well. So let's see. Um, yeah. So this is the run and uh, this is our loss which is which is cool which is which, which we saw it came in later and this is there uh this is this is pr this is pretty much the graph that we want to look at so the loss is good um it clearly has shown uh it seems to have hit uh a, a point here maybe we if you can train it with uh we trained it for two apex only on that like 100 of them so we, maybe if you train it longer for uh, more this thing you'd find this but let's try uh, let's try getting the model actually. So what we want is um, so the model would have been written to the results board. So if we go here um, to results, we now should have this checkpoint and we should have this uh, adapter model here. So the adapter model. So with, um, uh, with with the whole idea about this is that you would have uh, like a smaller uh, adapter file on top of the Guanaco model that's applied here, and so we will have to merge that. So let's try um, let's try deleting the model. So what what they have done here is basically empty the VRAM. Uh, they also restart the runtime. And then they essentially uh, are trying to load the base model um, and then, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, basically trying to run from there. And then they're pushing it to hugging face. Uh, so let's try doing this. I think 
Uh, but before that, I also want to make sure that we have the pipeline for text generation to see how, how this looks like. So let's do this. Um, so the model should be, uh, so what, what model is this? So this is um, a trainer.model, right? So essentially that's what we want. Uh, so here the model, the model can just not be model. We need the the trainer dot uh, model to be that model. Uh, we need to get the tokenizer. That's fine, uh, and we'll see what this looks like and see this is there. So, um, so we're going to use the same pipeline that we did before, uh, except that this. So after we train this model. Uh, it's there. Let's try running this uh, and see what happens now. I remember this is like an out of data set SQL query. Uh, so it's it's not present in that list that we saw. Um, maybe we should do trainer.model here. We'll see. Yeah, creatable votes, uh, creatable contestants. Um, votes. So it doesn't stop, it keeps going on and on and on. Uh, that's probably because we didn't give the end of token string in our thing. We should have. Um, so let's say tokenizer model dot uh, so let's find out if It's not that great. <laughs> it's another. It's a spec model for the supported models are. Uh, Yeah, this is clearly wrong. Um, this isn't. Uh, okay, let's find out. Let's try. Uh, let me do one thing. So let me. Uh, let's try uh, deleting the model. Let's get rid of this. Um, Let me go and change the number of parameters here. So this is there. So let me uh, rename this. Rename folder and we'll call it old results so that we can uh, do this later. I am going to. Um, so we when we load the data set uh, that we have. A range of hundred. I'm going to change this to uh, yeah range of two thousand. Yeah, because we have some more time. We can do this um, and all this. And I'm going to this restart the runtime. And. Uh, basically going to run all the models right, so we are back again the models down to zero I'm just going to say runtime run all and let's see this how this works all right so 
well we have this so let's also write um this so i think i will be asked to log in but yeah later so here um let me also get this code here for uh, doing this. So here, um, what they do, so this is for the upload section. Um, so let's do that. I'll also publish this notebook so that it's there. Oops, um, I deleted the output, I suppose, yeah. That's fine. All right. So here to save. Hugging face. Uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to. Save the model and change this. This is pretty cool. So what it does is that uh, it loads the base model again, um, and then it loads the pre-trained model from the output there, which is basically where our results folder is going to be. And then we are going to do a merge and unload. So what this does is now this this merges the Beft model um, uh, onto the base model, uh, and then. Uh, we get the token the model name and the all those kind of things okay uh now does it write it as well uh because I, I know it's loaded in memory but does this also write it okay oh no so then you do a hugging face uh thing and then you just push this uh to uh, to the hub actually so then you do a model dot push to hub um and um we set the shard size to two gigs so that's there so so this is essentially so we get the tokenizer and uh the model both of them that's there um and it's there so that would essentially um you know kind of um uh, change this and uh, It, that's that should basically do the uh do the saving of the model and all that so that's cool so i think right now what is it doing i think it's loading the model so we'll keep this commented out just so that it doesn't like run everything Uh, I think the better way to do that would be to uh, write it in a function. And call this function actually All right so yeah i think this this makes it better but let's see what's happening so uh it's now running the training that's pretty cool so we do we generate this text uh, it doesn't use a join yet I'm not sure if it would. Actually, it's screwed it's screw up. So I didn't change the run uh, time. So I think my uh, this is going to be the run now. I think suddenly the loss is going to like go up and then come back down. I suppose. Let's or maybe it's smart enough to get another run. Who knows? Yeah, it, it actually got another run, which is cool. So this is the old old run, and I think this is the new run. So 
So let's look at this. Uh, let's see. Happening. Yes. Get to All right, so this is good. So we have Yeah, that, that is it too. I mean, this is not a lot of code for training actually. So this is fairly straightforward to train, except that we are not getting the right kind of output that we are looking for, which I feel, uh, I mean, given we have enough RAM, uh, maybe I'll switch over to a 13B model uh, and see if that works better. Uh, maybe I can even do like a, a Falcon 40B model, uh, but on a, on a v, V100. Uh, or a or a this thing that might help too, but we'll see. There's so many choices when it comes to open source ones. So where is this new model name coming from? So, oh, this is the name of the new model. Okay. I think I set up new model here, right? Yeah. And it's just called new model. Probably I should just call it log me slash squeal so that But that's for later yeah so it says about this is a lot of time <laughs> let's see yeah, it's going to take a lot more runs here uh, but i think we let's see by exposing it to more data if it I, i'm just wondering if it gives a better um you know prediction Did we add the stop token at the end in our data set? I get all these fundamental questions. I didn't. So this we should have we should have oh it does say the US token, yes, it's here. It's here. We have the US token at the end. Which is uh yeah, which is slash s. We have the US token at the end, we have the S and slash s. So it should end. Yeah, whatever it is, I think I'm I am going to push this and then I'm going to test it uh, after. So. I think we are almost converging on a stable loss. See, so it's going down further. That's nice. Yeah, this is this part of training is like watching, uh, you know, the paint dry. It's extremely exciting. Uh, and the yeah, the loss curves are looking good. Not not bad. It's a good yet until we come to the so we don't have an eval data set uh, so but we are training on a small small enough uh, uh you know this thing oh some of these losses are looking promising let's see Because if you have an eval data set, we'll know if the model is overfitting. Maybe I should try doing that, but yeah.
but it doesn't look like it's overfitting. And we have shuffled the data sets and we randomly picked out like 2000 items. So, but that said, the data set is also crappy. I think we should, I, I look for a better data set, the SQL context data set. I, I'm pretty sure if you have a, um, if you have a better data set, uh, we have a better output as well. So here we have to do a lot of cleanup on the data set. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, this whole fine tuning thing is uh, is crazy. As you can see, there's not really a lot of code to fine tune. Uh, uh, the, the complexities arise in terms of scale. Like for example, if you have uh, like a massive model and you don't want to do four bit, and, and again, we are doing four bit quantization. So if you wanted to be float 16, and then you want to train it on like a whole bunch of uh, data in parallel and so on and so forth. Then there is a lot of complexity in the operations aspect of it. Uh, there's complexity in the data engineering aspect of it, but there is very little, like, I mean, just doing this is not that complex actually from a, from a scale of different things, right? I, mean, I think from a, uh, like, I mostly work on the back and I'm not a data scientist um, by, by any means. Um, I, I usually are, I'm building and scaling systems, um, uh, you know, mostly writing Go or Rust or TypeScript or what have you. And uh, I mean, th there is complexity there, but I, I feel like the amo amount of complexity in this code is not much. It's fairly well understood. And besides, we are all, we are standing on the shoulders of giants. So, this, uh, the Transformers library is amazing, which itself is built on PyTorch, uh, which itself, uh, you know, and then you have all these techniques, which the open source uh, community is amazing to bring that all in. Uh, I mean, if it feels easy, it's only because there's just a ton of work that has happened, uh, you know, behind the scenes. Uh, but that said, uh, in order for organizations to adapt or to adopt right large language models uh, in order to adopt uh, these in context learning fine tuning techniques and all that uh, it things have become things are pretty easy, easy i would say right so uh, the hard part is actually getting the data getting clean data that uh, is relevant to you is is much much harder problem and the whole data cleaning pipeline and what you have to do and all that is a much harder problem than uh, just training and fine tuning these models and and i believe that's where i think in context learning is going to be amazing because as these models get bigger um, so right now we are dealing with a pretty small model with small quantization um, with the gpu resources and uh, and so on and so forth but as we um I think push this further right with to a larger and larger models I feel uh, the model will be able to learn better through the examples provided in context rather than uh, you know you having to fine-tune it on so many um, uh, so many you know samples I think we are doing two apex right so if I'm not mistaken, did I accidentally increase the number of Apex? Or, or sorry, number of... So yeah, we are doing two Apex. Number of train Apex is two. So that means that it basically goes through this whole set of examples uh, that we have. Uh, I think 2000 samples, I think twice actually. And the second time I think it's going to shuffle it. Yeah. So it's going to go through all 2000 of them twice. And we are, yeah, I think we're almost done with training.
So what did this converge on to? Okay, it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Uh, we are sitting somewhere uh, close to like 0 0.8, 0 0.9. This is kind of like stabilized around this. Let's see. So this is going well. So yeah, I think I'm gonna stop the stream here and I'll also publish um, the, um, the other one that's there. So I think we may be uh, in a better shape than what we were before, but uh, let me publish this notebook. Um, I mean, watch out for the comments below um, on, on LinkedIn and uh, uh, you know, YouTube and Twitch. Uh, and uh, you know, you can, play around with this model. I'll also publish the model onto Hugging Face. Uh, so it'll be under Wagme slash squeal. Um, you know, check it out and let me know. Uh, maybe in tomorrow's uh, stream, we can try to figure out if we can uh, get this to work on a on a 13B model or something like a Falcon 40B and see if it works from there. Uh, and yeah, this I just wanted to play around with this a little bit. And I wanted to kind of demonstrate that uh, you know, you use fine tuning for changing the style of the output while we use in context learning for giving information to the model. And I wanted to kind of give like an example for both and do that. So anyway, thank you.